You see? I, I, don't, now I, I don't concern myself a whole lot with gifts. And the reason I don't is because I believe that I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all the gifts are in Him. Amen. So whatever I need is there when I need it. But I don't concern myself with the gift or a gift. I concern myself with the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the gift of the Spirit of life or the gift of life, eternal life. Right? You get that? That way I can minister to any person, anywhere, anytime, for anything they need. And I don't have to say, well, you know, I don't really operate in that gift, so, you, you know, go to somebody else. And we'll, we'll talk about these tomorrow, as a matter of fact. We'll get into, into in depth on these. But I want you to realize that the life, when you minister to a person, don't think in terms of, you know, I'm going to lay hands to point them out so that God can dump healing on them. Or I'm going to speak to them to point them out to God so that he can dump deliverance on them. You have to realize, nothing falls from heaven in that sense. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You got that? When you lay hands, it's not so God can find them and dump whatever they need on them. It is so that you can transmit to them. And laying on of hands is the easiest way to transmit. Contact and transmission, lowest form. You got that? The lowest form of being able to minister is having to lay hands on a person. Why? Because you have to, you're limited to having to be in their presence. Right? You're limited in location. The, the, a, not the highest form, the next form up. Okay? Would possibly be what we generally call, the Bible didn't call it this, but what we generally call prayer clause. That'd be the next step up. Why? Because it had to physically be in my presence and then I had to send it, which means it had to travel a distance, and, and they didn't get it until it got into their presence. It's a step up, you know, step up, but it's not, not the purest. Amen. Right? So nothing against it, right? We use it. But the funny thing is, it was only mentioned really one time, and we made a whole doctrine out of it. Okay? So, again, not, you can't make a doctrine off of one thing, one scripture. Okay? Still works. But, so the next level is being able to speak and have it occur. Now, the beauty of being able to speak and have it occur is the fact that you don't have to be in their presence. Amen. Okay? Now, see, this just enlarged you to where you can speak to this person in another place and the word will travel there and set them free. Okay? Now, you can do it by telephone. I've talked to people, Australia, South Africa, prayed for them healed at a distance, praying for them, talking to them. I have got requests in, we prayed, and then we get another email later and they say, I was healed. Why? Because we spoke. We did not have to be in their presence. That's the power of the Spirit of God that travels. Now, that's even technically not the highest. The next highest, okay, is being able to, and, and actually some of the examples that I could give you is actually Old Testament more than any other. But, is being able to look and affect the cure, affect the healing, affect the deliverance with a look, right? Now, first off, you already know this. You already practice it, okay? You just don't know you do it. But you men, you know when you get that look from your wife. <laughs> you know exactly what she means. It's like, zip it right now, right? And you're like, oh, got it. I got it. She didn't say a word. A look, right? Her entire spirit was pouring out of her eyes at that moment, right? Right? And, and if you're not dense, you picked up on it, okay? So, now you could do that. Now, your children know the same thing. They pick that up. They know. You know, man, they can be doing all kinds of stuff, and you can tell them, stop it, stop it, stop it. And when you get that look, you get that certain look, and they're like, ooh, better stop. If we do it again, he'll remember when we get home. Right? Up to now, he won't remember. When we get home, he'll forget it. When you get that look, he's going to remember. Right? Why? That look. You know it. Why? Because your spirit, when you're looking and you are determining what you're thinking, for lack of a better word, when you look at them, you are transmitting your spirit, the spirit of God in you, okay? You're transmitting that through a look. And you don't have to touch. You don't have to say a word. Matter of fact, um, for instance, I'll give you some examples. Even in the uh, book of Acts, Peter said, look on us. In other words, fix your eyes here. There was other times when they said, and they fixed their eyes upon it. When Jesus went into the synagogue, now I'm giving you some negative examples too. When Jesus went into the synagogue, they said, and, they, and, and all those that were present, they fixed their eyes, all their eyes were fixed upon him. Why? They, they, he got their attention, right? And they were watching. You can do it with a look. 
to be able to send the Spirit with the look. Now, but that's still not the highest because you still got to see. You got to see them. You got to be kind of in their presence, right? But you're not touching them. But the highest, and, and this is debatable, and I, I could use some other examples of these things, but one, I, I would say at least one of the highest is being able to just believe. Just believe. Now, when you believe, there, what come, now listen, you, this will come with believing. You will expect. But expect, people say sometimes, well, expecting is the highest form. Okay, I kind of agree with that. But expecting is a form of believing. So technically it's believing. But the expecting is generally, if a person is expecting something, you can sense that in them. And that is when you believe. That's why I try to tell people. You can lay hands. Jesus laid hands. Uh, he, he, he spoke. Uh, many times he laid hands on people. He touched them. Other times people touched him. That's another thing. See, we have to realize the, the, the rules of healing are not so detailed that it has to work this way. There, it's, it's the laws of the Spirit. You get it? And that life, as it said in, uh, in Romans chapter 8, that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And because of it, there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's a law. A law is a standard or a rule that is followed. There is a law of the spirit of life. There are laws to the spirit realm. There are laws in how the spirit operates. And when you learn how those laws operate, it's not that there are detailed things the way to do it. It's just the way it moves. When you learn his laws, you're not learning methods you're learning how he moves. You get that? So instead of trying to figure out how to make this and this and this, it can get very mechanical, but at the same time, it's the laws of the spirit of life. The laws of the spirit of life is that life flows out from you. It emanates from you. It's why they brought people out in the street when Peter walked by just so his shadow would, would fall over them. Why? And people would get healed as, as the shadow of Peter touched them. Why? Why did that happen? It wasn't his shadow. It was the fact that they were within range of his shadow. And you, the human spirit, especially filled with... The average human spirit emanates as far as your arms. Right? In all directions. Now, if I could go backwards further, I would. But it, basically, in all directions, it's a, almost like a sphere around you. It also goes above you. It's like a circle around you. Your spirit, the spirit of life in you, emanates from you in all these directions. And, it, and, and you, know, you already know this. You can stand in line. Somebody will walk up behind you. You don't even hear them. But whenever they get... See, whenever... When it, if this was the, the distance at which it reaches, they have a distance. Usually the length of your arms approximately there. And then you have a distance, the length of your arms. So whenever you, they get close enough that you could reach out and touch hands, when you get that close, when someone gets that close to you, you feel it. Okay? When they walk up behind you, get in line, you don't have to look at them. You know they're there. You don't hear them, but you can feel it. I can tell you this. Okay, I'm just going to prove to you that life and, the, and your spirit can go through your eyes. Because I, I challenge you, go somewhere tonight if you're going to go eat or something like that. Sit behind somebody at a distance. Stare at the back of their head. <laughs> just, just fix your eyes on them and literally concentrate on letting your spirit touch them. And in a real short period of time, you know what they're going to do? Why? They feel it. Why? Now, what they're, they're not feeling this. They're feeling when your spirit hits theirs. You get that? Whenever your spirit invades their space, they will feel it and respond to it. That is the spirit. Now, what, what I'm going to show you this as we move on to this I will show you how, as that spirit, as you learn how to purposely emanate the spirit of God, you can do that through a, through a look, the word, whatever it is. But when people get around you, when they get in your presence, now see the funny thing is we call, oh, yeah, he, he walks in such an anointing. You get in his presence. You can feel it when you get it. It's really not that. That's what we've taken it to mean. But really, it is just that their spirits are strong Sensitive. with the spirit of God and you can sense it. Right? We'll talk about more, more about that. But what I'm trying to get across to you is don't limit God. Yeah? Yeah, again, laying hands, that's the first level. That's good. But don't limit God. Right? Believe. Believing with the expression of expectation 
I believe is probably the highest form. The, the only high, the, the, only, and, and the further, okay, healing, uh, laying on of hands, if you looked at it in distance, that would be the, the biggest chunk, mm -hmm. right, of healing that's practiced. Mm -hmm. Then as you go out beyond that and you start doing it with a word or maybe with a prayer cloth, that's much fewer people actually do that. Then you go out beyond that and you do it with just a word. Each, each uh, strata gets smaller because there's fewer and fewer people that operate in that, right? <clears throat> Operating, literally letting your spirit go through the eyes, that, that's minuscule as far as running into people that actually can do that, right? It's not a special gift or anything else. It's just growing up in Him, basically, is what it comes out to. But, as, but then going even beyond that and get into a place where you believe and you expect now it's getting even smaller. And those are the people that many times we look at and we talk about them and they're, uh, you know, uh, mighty manifestations of, of just the, the just, just gift of faith. Like, like Moses, the Red Sea, working in miracles, things like that. And very few people operate at that. Now, I personally believe that the furthest out there and the best one and the one we're supposed to be walking in, if you want to jump over all this other stuff to get there, Remember I just and it's almost like a brother to the other one or kin to the other one of believing and expecting is even beyond that. And it's believing that it's done. Amen. Amen. You get it? Yeah. Believing with expecting means you're still expecting it to happen. It's great faith in that. But the next step is it's done. You get that? As we study this, you're going to see the most important thing you can study in the Word of God or can take notice as you read the Word of God is looking at the tenses of the words. Almost everything from Romans especially on is all past tense. Why? Because it's already done. It's already done. Healing, listen, you're not going to get healed. You, you were healed. You were already done. It's done. You get it? Now, you may experience it. You may, it may manifest here. Or I, even, I don't even like using that term. But you may experience it here. But just because you experience it now doesn't mean it just happened. Right? Mm 